Hi, today we'll show how to customize the button. So first of all, let's get back to our theme. So let's open Dolphin, go to dot local share plasma desktop theme as always and go to the Sonia folder and then the widgets. Now this is where we'll put our button SVG. To actually get our button SVG started, do not create one from scratch. It is impossible. Go to slash USR share plasma desktop theme, then default widgets and search for the button.svg. Take this one as a reference. So let's copy it and then paste it into our folder. And voila, we have our button. So let's see how to customize it. So let's open it and see what it is inside. So we have a lot a lot of elements to customize. So first of all, let me say that there are two kinds of buttons in the Plasma world. So if we open up the vaults section, I don't know, but Plasma today is a bit laggy for me. We we'll see that there are two kinds of buttons, the tool button one, which is this one on the top and the actual button, which looks broken right now because I was messing with it, but it looks like this. If we open up system settings and get back to normal breeze in the plasma style section, let's get back to breeze. We'll see that the button looks normal to say the least like this. So normal button and tool button, which is the one without a background. So we can see here that there are four uh, columns and five um, types, let's say. So the first column is about the mask. We've seen the mask before and the concept of mask is that when uh, the composi compositor does compositing, you know, it also, it, it knows the boundaries of the uh, button background that we've defined. So the mask should always be black and the same size and shape as the actual background. We also have one for the focus, which again should be same size and shape to the background. Then we actually have the background property, which only applies to the focused button. And basically what it does, it redefines the background appearance of a button that's been focused. So if we go to the votes section, we can tab until our button is focused. And as you can see, it changed it changes completely, it becomes blue, and that's because we change the background. Then we have the default. The default is the appearance of the default button. So we can see that we have uh, the shadow, the background, when it's hovered. So if we, sorry, I, I'll keep the, the applet open this time. If we hover, we can see that there's a blue outline, which is defined here. If we focus it, we can see that it gets a blue background, but also a blue outline. And when it's pressed, we can see that the background becomes blue. So we can try this out. And as you can see, it becomes indeed blue. Then we also have the tool button, which is the last one, which defines the shape and um, the look of these tool buttons on the top. So as you can see, there's no background. Indeed, there's no background. There's a blue outline when it's hovered, like this. Uh, a blue darker outline when it's focused, so like this. You can see that there's a darker blue um, line around it. And then when it's pressed, it actually becomes all blue, like this, or, you know, like this one. So let's actually try to see how to customize all of these properties. So let's start up by reading the notes that we have put here. The first node says some margins ints have 0.001 width or height because you can't use exactly zero. As an example, we have the shadow. Let's look at the shadow one second. So we have we have a one pixel right and bottom margins that defines that uh, basically they say that the shadow is one pixel in width and height uh, only on the bottom and right parts. On the left and on the top, the button actually does not have um, at all any shadow. So the margin are here, and as you can see, they're 0.000 in this case height 
and in this case 0 0.001 width. So they can't be exactly zero, so they are a bit more, but if we decide that we do want top and left shadow, we can change the height to be one, or even more if you want a bigger shadow, and same here, the width can be one. So now we do have a shadow all around, but we actually need to define the shadow. So let's um, open up the rectangle and Let's say that I do want a, a green uh, rectangle, sorry about the black stroke, okay. A green rectangle as um, the left shadow, which is totally fine, uh, of this size, okay. And then same for the top one, so like this. So now it's important, uh, sorry, I got size wrong again, okay. Now it's important to see that these uh, two elements have to be named, um, sorry, object pro properties, have to be named shadow top and shadow left. However, this element is already called shadow top and this one is already called shadow left. So what we can do is first of all, take off this name by inserting random stuff like this and then like this and then go to these two and group them together so they are together and same here together and then give to the whole group the name shadow top like this and here shadow left today I can type properly <laughs> okay so now we have shadow left shadow top shadow right and shadow bottom which is pretty symmetric so if we go to system settings and switch back to the Sonia theme, it takes a bit to take effect, but after that we can go to the Vault's applet and we'll see that our shadow is indeed green on the left and so top sides. Now we could do exactly the same thing for um, the bottom left, bottom right, top right and top left shadows, but for now let's just keep these ones. Now I will also demonstrate what if you want a bigger shadow. So let's take this one and make it 3 pixels of um, height and width. Like this, okay. Sorry, like this. I need to edit it pixel by pixel. Okay, so now it's 3 pixels. We can also change this element to be 3 pixels of height and width like this and like this and given that we are working on a shadow we can also give this a gradient so in fill uh, and stroke let's give it a gradient this looks just fine and then here as well a gradient from top to bottom like this Now let's get back to system settings, switch to another theme and then back to Sonia to see what worked and what didn't. Let's go to the Vault's applet and we'll see that we have indeed a bigger shadow on the bottom and on the right that actually looks more like a shadow. But uh, Breeze is a bit minimalistic uh, when it's about shadows of small components, so it only uses one pixel shadow by default. So now we can switch to the actual normal uh, back, um, normal uh, appearance of the button, of the normal button, not the tool button. You cannot actually customize the background of a tool button because the tool button is supposed to not have any background at all. So if we get to the normal button, we can see in the objects section that we have two elements, one of which is a small, let's say small, um, not very, very transparent, let's say very transparent uh, object and then a path under it. So we are more interested in the opaque uh, path. So let's change its color, let's make it uh, a gradient that goes from red to transparent like this but if you do want this to work you need to go to um, edit and click on XML editor which will pop up here then click on the 
well not click but it will be selected already the path you are working on and in here you will see that we have this rule fill current color and class color scheme button background what this says is something that will look um, more into it later but basically it says take the color from the color scheme of the color of the button and then apply it as a fill now if we do want to customize the fill of this button we need to take this off so just click on the um, trash bin and then we can get back to actually defining the background uh, then when we are done when we are done we can get back to settings switch to painting and then back to Sonia to see if it's worked and it did we do have a background that's a gradient so we managed to customize the background now uh, remember to do the same when you're editing like this one if you want to edit the color of the outline go to objects make sure to select the correct rectangle which in this case is this one as you can see and then go to XML editor take off fill and class then back to fill and stroke define your own stroke as an example let's make it from red to green like this but uh, let's say a bit more opaque if we want uh, like this and then we can see that this will work but always make sure to go to the XML editor and tick off the fill and class um, sections which is super nice and everything we can see that it is indeed working in here walls like this we can see that the bottom is a, a repetition of our gradient from red to green and then we can get back to our SVG and start customizing the hover so uh, let me say one thing first it, it's obvious but let's say it the these uh, margins purple margins define the margin between the content of the button and the actual uh, outline around it so if we take these and make them much smaller like this as an example of course the whole button will become much smaller because the margin between the content which is always the same size and the outline of the button will decrease so let's actually test this theory out and now it looks like this I don't honestly remember if this looks smaller than before but it should now let's get uh, with uh, back to our hover and uh, actually let me say one more thing about this uh, green rectangle which you should put regardless of what you're doing this is normal int compose over border so what this saying is to the composer please compose over the actual border uh, of the um, button so all over here um, and uh, you always should add this uh, don't take this off then the over category which is you know the over stuff and um, we have this element and if we go select here you can actually see that um, in here there's another margin element that's uh, 0 0.001 in height and what this basically does is say that um, the negative margin because if we go here and read this note shadow over and focus not focus background use negative margins this behavior blah 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 so basically what is this is saying is that if this um, margin was not zero so something like I don't know two this would look uh, in the button let's go here not on top of the button but actually two pixels inside of it so the more margin you put here the more inside of the button the um, outline for the hover element will be so it, it does make sense to keep it at uh, zero because we do not want the outline to be inside of the button so we can actually again change the background of um, the the button uh, sorry the 
line around the button when it's hovered, but always make sure in the XML editor that you do not have this fill, current color and class properties. So let's take them off. It will become black, this is normal. And then just put another uh, fill. Let's go with a purple-ish one. So again, take uh, this off fill and class year fill and class and then year fill and class sorry i removed something i should have um, and class and then just uh, select them and give them this purple ish color like uh, this to purplish um let's select them again uh, solid color like this so if we save again reset the theme and oh the button is indeed smaller now it take it took uh, a bit to take uh, effect and if we do over it we can see that the outline instead of being blue is actually purple if you do want your element here to be larger than one pixel so let's say um, two pixels this is three, but and the same idea. You now have to ask yourself how much of these um, three pixels should be outside the button? Because if all three should be inside of the button, then that's fine. This is what, I'm uh, sorry, out, inst uh, I want to say outside. If you want these three pixels to be outside the button, then this is fine. But if you want some of these pixels to be inside of the button, then you have to change the size of uh, the margin, sorry, the margin here, because it's a negative margin. Then we can also change the same thing for the uh, tool button hover, which again is when you hover a button that's happier. And uh, we can see that we could change it um, just like we've done before by selecting it, going to XML editor, taking off field class, but let's actually not edit it and just let me explain how do the margin work here. You have uh, four margins that define the distance between the outline and the content. So if you put very, very big margins here, sorry, like this, like this, like this and like this and then actually go uh, to see how changed what we'll see is that when you hover the button the outline will be very distant from the center and this is because we made the margin much bigger so then we can move on into the focus section which is again when you tab into that button so again we have the mask we have a new background so let's make this one i don't know uh, again, take selecting the right element, which is the path, and then in the XML editor, removing the fill and um, the class, also the fill rule, What? why not, it shouldn't be here. And then again, again, radial gradient, let's say this time from purple to uh, yellow, like this, beautiful. So if we do this and then change the theme, we'll see that by tabbing into the button in the vaults as an example it will become purple to yellow like this also we can see that these margins define the um, let's say that take place instead of the mar these margins so if you have a different uh, size in margins from year from year like we do the size of the actual button will change if you uh, focus it. So as you can see, if we go back to faults, now the button is small, but if we uh, focus it, it will become bigger. So there's also the possibility to define an outline. And in this case, you can see that there's actually a one pixel margin. Again, remember that this margin is negative, which means that whereas these lighter blue outline is outside the button the darker darker blue one is inside of the button again if you want to edit these then go 
two objects, select the right one, which could be this one or this one, and then XML and remove fill and class, and then put your own paint, like green as an example. You can do the same for uh, this tool button one. And then finally, we have the pressed, I will not say and customize every single thing because otherwise it would take hours, sorry about that. And then we have the pressed um, version, which is when you actually press the button. And again, we do have the margins that will replace this margin here. So make sure maybe that they're the same size of these ones, otherwise the button will change in size. And then you can customize uh, the background uh, by selecting the element, going to XML, removing fill and class, and then putting your own, like, I don't know, um, let's make it, uh, why isn't, isn't it red? Okay, red. And then same thing for the tool button, which is this one. Again, these margins define the, the distance from the outside of the button and the inside. So if we make them super big like this, what will happen is that the, the button will be super big when you actually press on it. And then let's also make this one uh, not current color, but red, because today I like red. And that's enough of a justification. Like, um, sorry, like this. This is red enough for me. So now we can go into the vaults and see what changed we have the um, tool button when it's clicked it becomes smaller because somehow the margin didn't take yet effect sometimes they take one to two restarts of the theme and before they take effect but it does become red and then the actual button indeed becomes red again so this is how you customize the the button also you have the, these uh, ints that are uh, almost the same as before. We have in compose over border, which should, you should leave alone. And then focus highlighted background. What this says is basically you actually have a background. If you do not have a background for the focused button, as an example like this, then you can actually take this off and everything will work. Uh, of course, the normal button will only have the outline and not a different background when you change it. And then again, this one is composed over border, which should you should leave alone. So this is basically how you customize the button. It's quite hard and it's normal if you don't get to write um, the first time. This is actually the third time I'm trying to record this video because all the other times I got into troubles. But if you actually have some, um, you know, troubles implementing them, feel free to come to me and ask me via email or message something. I will try my best to answer it. See you um, next time with a new SVG. This will be super fun.